Welcome to Novel Spotlight, the podcast where published fiction writers are interviewed to gather their insights and writing lessons so we can use them to make ourselves better and more effective writers. There are just three things I ask of you, if appropriate to you and your experience. Please subscribe, please click on the like button, and please share this program link with any family members, friends, or colleagues who might be interested or benefit from the content. Now, on with our program. This is my console. Thank you for listening. I'm going to be honest. This is the time of year when I annoy my family members and friends because it's New Year's resolution time. And I've had this history of asking people, what's your New Year's resolution? Over the years, what I've found out is that most people don't even bother with New Year's resolutions. They may have been in the past and they failed repeatedly. So they decided that uh, they're done with that. And I'm a guy who sets a New Year's resolution every year. In fact, years ago, I once set five resolutions in a single year, which, of course, is a formula for failure. This year, I'm setting one singular resolution, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But first, according to Google, the number one, and this won't surprise anybody, the number one New Year's resolution among Americans, or maybe people around the world even, is to lose weight. And they fail at that because the experts say that the problem is, the resolution is, I want to lose weight during the next year, during the new year. Problem is, there's no specificity. They don't say, I want to lose 20 pounds. And those 20 pounds comes out to X number of pounds per month. And then setting a strategy for how am I going to lose that many pounds per month? If you don't know how many pounds you actually want to lose, then you can't track it. And it's not very easily tracked unless you divide it out a little bit. I'd say with weight loss, it's probably best to do that on a, on a monthly basis so that you can track progress and make sure you're on track or not or ahead of the pace, or whether you need to accelerate your efforts and so on. Now, I suspect a lot of people listening to this are writers, and I think writers are more inclined to set a New Year's re resolution that has to do with writing, especially if you're a writer who's actively writing, who has got a writing project in the works. So here's mine. It's very simple to complete the novel I'm working on right now. This is novel number five. I want to complete that novel. And I think it's very realistic because I'm already roughly 20% of the way there. So in order to be specific, what do I do? I just figure my blueprint for this tells me I'm going to write a total of 326 pages, obviously give or take some. I've already written 80 of those pages. That means I have 246 pages left to go. According to my calculations, that's 360, page, uh, 360 words per page and a total of 88,560 words. So this is a lot of words left, but I'm dividing it out by, by 52 weeks. That comes out to 1,700 words per week or 243 words per day, which is not enormous. It's, it's very doable. And these are completed, not just completed pages, these are finished pages. I expect to be ahead of the pace of 1,700 words per week. And really, I need to be because it's, it's one thing to, to write those words. It's another thing to get them in and finished condition. I tend to be one of those guys who produce the words and then I like to have a finished chapter before I move on to the next chapter. That's not to say I don't go back and then go through the whole book again, because I do. It's important to do that anyway, because along the way, well, you want to make sure everything tracks. You want to make sure that characters are in character and that uh, there aren't any, not any holes left along the way. Now, as writers, hopefully we've resolved to get a certain amount of work, a certain amount of writing, a certain amount of productivity completed from day to day or week to week. 
But for me, when we reach New Year's Day, really New Year's Eve, as we approach New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I always think in terms of, well, I pause, just like I do at birthday time. There's two dates in the year that really make me pause and evaluate where I'm at in my life. One is my birthday. and The other one is the new year. And I think a lot of people do this without setting any kind of resolution. They, they pause and they do think in terms of where they are in their life. Are they where they want to be? And that's one of the reasons so many people change jobs after the new year, I think. I mean, oftentimes, it's, I want to finish out the year. I want to get my bonus check. I don't want to leave before I get that year-end bonus, if that's the kind of job you've got. But then there's also that whole reset. It's a new year, good time to go looking. A lot of other people are making moves. So that's opening up positions and creating openings, one of which I might be able to occupy. Some of the people I've talked to say, you know, I set goals every year, all year long. It's not the sort of thing where, oh, because it's New Year's, I'm going to set a goal. But then there's the people who say, I don't set New Year's resolutions because I always fail at them. And that just makes me feel bad about myself. So let me offer some suggestions for New Year's resolutions in the coming year. And I'm basing this on a little bit of Googling I've done about what are some of the top New Year's resolutions. I mentioned weight. Focus on improving your health. Of course, weight loss is always a good way to, assuming you have extra weight, a good way to improve your health. Looking after your finances is another important one, particularly since so many people have taken a hit because of the pandemic, a financial hit, a professional hit because of job loss or maybe reduced hours and so on. Pursue an aspiration. Well, that's what I'm doing. That's what a lot of you are doing with writing projects. Invest in your relationships. You know, one of the things that we learn is that the people who lived 100 years old or more and, and do so in a healthy fashion, what's consistent among them, they tend to have st strong family relationships and strong friendships or relationships in general. They're connected to other people. It's really good for your mental health. And that's another one on this list I'm looking at. Look after your mental health. We've heard so much about mental health from everything from tennis and Olympic stars to celebrities of all kinds. Live more sustainably. We always want to make our planet a better place to live. Disconnect from your phone. That's a hard one for me because my phone is where I listen to audiobooks. I record notes all the time on my phone. I record narrative on my phone often. I do research there, although I also do it on a laptop. But it is true that I know people who they'll come to a family gathering and rather than talking with their family members and friends, they'll take a seat on the sofa and just go to work on their phone. Really kind of sad. Also on this list is read more books. Amen to that. Amen to that. A few others, get out of your comfort zone. Obviously you need to put something specific to that. What is your comfort zone? How do you get out of that comfort zone? What are you going to do that's part of the discomfort zone. And finally, uh, plan that once in a lifetime trip. Obviously, there are an endless number of New Year's resolutions that we can set, but I would really encourage you to pay a lot of attention to health and wellness and relationships. I do believe that all feeds are writing projects. Have those basic 
building blocks aren't in place, it makes it all the more difficult to feel good about sitting down each day and getting our projects done. You know, I would also make the argument that relationships are essential to to producing content, to finding content, to finding characters. You know, we make up characters, but we also take, and at least in my case, and I don't think I'm different than most writers in this way, we take real life people, family members, friends, acquaintances, and we turn them into characters. We make them a part of what we're writing, but we may caricature them. We obviously make changes, but there are aspects about them, quiddities and eccentricities that make them interesting or bad behavior that makes them perhaps one of those reprehensible characters that we need in our story and our cast of characters. At any rate, you get the picture here. Well, one of the things I always encourage people to do is set a reasonable goal. Make it simple enough. Allow yourself to achieve some goals. So write me with your thoughts on the matter. The email address is novelistspotlight at gmail.com. What are your New Year's resolutions or resolution? Or just write me with your thoughts on the matter. I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that, I want to offer you my best wishes for a healthy, happy, and productive new year. This is Mike Consul signing off for Novelist Spotlight. Happy New Year to all.